That's class, Tommy Fleming and uh, Vince Gill. What a wonderful world. How are you doing, Tommy? I'm good, Johnny. How, How are you? you? Good Looking to see good. you again. Yeah. Would I hear you coughing and spluttering a bit there with the man flu? I have the man flu. I'm dying. You deserve a medal for know, fighting your way in here know, and battling against it. it. I got out of my bed and I came in here. I have man flu. I'm grand. I'm fine. Not a bother yeah. on me. Do you know it's scientifically proven that it does affect men far <laughs> far more than women? And, and women's lack of sympathy is not uh, acceptable. I, I'm saying nothing because women buy a lot of my tickets. <laughs> Except Tommy Fleming fans, they're all class, they're, they're brilliant, you know. So listen, um, another album, 25 Years of Songs, mm. it's called Stories. Stories, um, I, didn't want to, um, I didn't want to actually celebrate or make a kind of big deal out of it, and then I said, you know, why not? Life's too short. Um, and instead of doing a best of and rehashing everything that I'd done over the years, there is some of that in it, don't get me wrong, we re- pre- recorded... T- Five new songs, and then I took songs from Paddy the Show that I did last the last two years, the musical drama that I was yeah. in, and I picked up a few kind of um, one or two that I hadn't released before, live recordings and stuff like that that hadn't. The town I love, the town I love so well, is one of them. Mm. Um, long and winding road. So there's, it's not stuff. I didn't want to be rehashing it. That people say oh, I have all of them. Yeah, you know, I wanted something different, and we also did it in a lady book and a lady book, a ladybird format. Uh, you know the Ladybird books the old, when you were a kid? Yes. So that's when it was called Stories. So let's make it into a little book and kind of bring oh, it into good. the Stories yeah. theme, you know. Um, I have to say, some of the songs on it, I mean, it's a terrific collection of songs, you know. Um, Ave Maria, Morning is Broken. Uh, Scorn Not His Simplicity, which is a beautiful song. Yeah, I Phil's, love that. Yeah. Phil Coulter. As you say, The Long and Winding Road, both sides now is terrific as well. With Lucy Silvis, yeah. yeah. Lucy did that with me a good few years ago. Um, so this is what, I have three duets on it with Vince Gill, Michelle Lally, who worked with me in Paddy, and Lucy, Lucy Silvis. Can I, uh, about Vince Gill, I mean, he's a, he's a, I know you're famous, but he's a megastar. <laughs> so what would I just get on the phone to Vince Gill? Vince, I'm, I'm going to give I you I didn't your, actually. I'll give you your big break. Yeah, you can be on I my wish. CD. I didn't actually. Um, the guy that produced the, sh- the song, a guy called Dan Shea, um, we were emailing back and forth on songs that I want to, that might work for him to produce on them. And he came back with this, and I sent it with Wonderful World, and I sent him an email back and said, yeah, that would be brilliant as a duet, and I'll only do it with Vince Kill, haha, or Dolly Parton. Yeah. And I've come, but not so long afterwards, he sent me an email back to say, have Vince, he wants to do it, when are you free to come over? So that's how it worked. So, and so if you don't ask, you don't if get If you don't ask, yeah, you don't yeah. get And um, well, I met, I'd met him uh, once before that, when he was over in Ireland doing a few shows. And he loved what I did, so he was quite willing to jump on board with it. That's terrific. That's yeah. I loved it. I loved working with him on it. Loved it. Because, you've, you, well, you've been an admirer of Vince for a long time. Since anyway. 1990. Yeah. Since he brought out the um, I Still Believe in You album. Yeah. I was 19. Yeah. So mm. it had a big impression big on you. Big impression on me. As a singer, as a musician... Um, as an entertainer all around her. But listen, um, for you to do a duet with him, it would be for a lot of people, be like getting to play with Man United or Liverpool or whoever, you know? You <laughs> must have been be really <laughs> buzzing about that. Were you? Do you know what it was? I kind of, um, I didn't want to let it be seen. I was kind of, I was very blasé about it, going, oh yeah, that's fine, thanks. And like every, each time I'd hang up the phone, I'd go, yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so it was, and the funny thing was, I was in New York. I went over to the US tour and, um, I was finished the sound check and I had a missed call from a Nashville number yeah. and I rang it back on next thing Mr. Gill answered and he oh. was just ringing to say he loved working on the song he got my number from the producer and if there was anything else I needed he, this is his number This is, and I thought great yeah I'd be around in an hour <laughs> yeah it's a touch of class though isn't it I should, yeah. he's, the, he's the creme de la creme when it comes to like you know I know Gareth Brooks is up there with country music and Brad Paisley and all of those but there's something special about Vince Gill as a singer as a as an artist as everything and he's the real deal like he's a real country singer well he sounds like he's a gentleman as well he's a lovely man lovely yeah. lovely lovely gen- that's exactly what he is, he's a gentleman he's there's nothing kind of brash there's nothing um there's nothing celebrity about him yeah it's all very down to earth no frills is this okay that's brilliant thanks it's all very much a please and thank you I um I love to hear that when you know people we know in the the, the limelight are actually real people as well. And that's, that's and it's refreshing. funny when it came to actually recording it. Um, we did it in two different countries. I was at home. He was in yeah in Na- in Nashville, and 
uh, uh, there was a choice for me to go over about a week early before the US tour and spend time with him doing that. Yeah. And there was a part of me that didn't want to do that because I thought, I don't want to be careful what you wish for because mm-hmm. I thought I could be very disappointed. But I, I knew I wasn't when I spoke to him. Yeah, that that is terrific. Mm. So, I mean, you've got a vast back catalogue and I know there's a load of songs that you would love to tackle. So how did you narrow it down? There's 32 songs on this double CD. Were you sitting wrestling with yourself? I was, for want of a better word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I am uh, moving swiftly along. I am... Um, I... <laughs> Now you put me laughing, stop. Um, I, I, when I was sitting down thinking of the songs, I didn't want to kind of be doing what... I didn't want to be a crowd pleaser on this one. I wanted to pick songs that meant something to me, mm-hmm. that had, you know, like... I went, instead of going from 1991 upwards, I went the other way around. So I did all the new songs and then worked my way back. So the last song on the second CD is The Isle of Inish Free, which I recorded in 1991. And so that's how I worked my way back. And the what were important to me, songs that had a marker in life, love, happiness, sadness, whatever they were, they're markers in a certain period of my life. So some people might sit and put together a mixtape, a compilation CD of mm. their favourite tunes that, you know, landmarks. You go and record uh, a double CD and bring it out, you know. But well, it, so it, some of it was already recorded. I just yeah. did the new songs. I did yeah. the, put five new songs on it and then picked stuff that I'd already in the in the store, as we say, that people didn't have already. Because I didn't want people kind of saying, I'm oh, he's just doing another best of. And that's, to me, that's cheating and it's lazy. And I don't do either, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's but I have to say, it's it's brilliantly packaged. What I love, and I, I, I love when people make the effort to do this, there are little stories about each song, song yeah. about why you've recorded it and why it's on this And where it came from and, and what's what it meant to me. So I love that, yeah. you know. Because you can read that and then you, you listen to the songs in a better context, I suppose. Well, know? it means more to the to the fan or to the person that hasn't heard of me before or oh, the could be just that's the very first CD they've ever bought of mine or listened to. And that means they might just yeah. say, right, no, I might buy another one. You know? Buy the rest of them. Buy the rest of them. Get buy on, the entire back get, get on, Oh, that's it. Get on the internet. What else has this fella done? You know, <laughs> get him a turn. Get him a, <laughs> buy him a bungalow in Donegal. You know? <laughs> Listen, uh, you're touring again, well, I suppose next year, um, 9th of February, the Bernavon Theatre in Cookstown, yep. the 10th Millennium Forum in Derry, and then the 25th, uh, the Ulster Hall in Belfast. In Belfast. I return to Belfast. Yeah. Um, I always love coming back to the Ulster Hall and the Millennium, of course, and and been playing the Bernavon for 12, 13 years now. Yeah. So they're always great, and they're always sellouts for us, thank God. Um, I know the one thing I love about the Northern audience is... There's no frills, you know. It's either black and white, and if they're not if they're not happy with what you're doing, they'll tell you straight up oh, in yes. the audience. Oh you know? yeah, oh, it's very way. kind of, you know, stop doing your own thing and play, please us, you know. <laughs> and I love that, absolutely love the. Do you love that? Yeah. I do. Yeah, I love the honesty in it. Love the, love the the no BS basically. You yeah. Know? Well, uh, the result of that is when they clap and cheer, you know it's genuine. You know it's genuine, you know? absolutely. You yeah, know? you've and, earned it. And you, you kind of, I don't pussy foot around it. It's kind of just go in and do the show and stop. You know, don't be precious, basically. Yeah. You know? Well, I think the audiences appreciate that. And, of course, the Ulster Hall is a, a <laughs> tremendous venue, isn't it? Uh, so the, the acoustics in it are amazing. They, I love what I... The, you know, my favourite part of it is the high stage. Yeah. Because in a lot, a lot of new concert halls and a lot of new places, there's either no stage, just a floor, and the audience go up. Yeah, that's Or right, it's yeah. a very low stage. And you're kind of... Whereas you, th- there's that little separation that makes you work that bit harder. Yeah. But you're up on a... A pedestal, uh, but the Ulster Hall, of course, was designed way back in the days before amplification, so acoustics were at a priority. Yeah, so, so that's why. Yeah. So it's, it's that's why it's. It's a beautiful in building, there. though. It's a yeah. be- and we're always, we're always so well looked after when we go there. Um, it's look at it's one of the best venues in the country. Yeah, it is smashing. I love, I've played it a few mm. times myself, and um, sort of pinch myself, going, "Whoa, we're at the stage of the Ulster Hall. Oh, the Clash played here. Yeah, you know, it, see, that would be my sort of markers. But ev- Led Zeppelin played there. Uh, Everybody's played great, there. A, a lot of greats played in it. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, lots of greats played. In it. But it's great to come back to it, Johnny. It's, it's always, it's always fun, actually. Yeah, it's always fun, and there's always a great reaction. Well, well, that's good. You can even anticipate a gig like that. Well, I hope you know, so. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what I mean. You know, sometimes you, you've got a gig coming up, and you, we've never played here before. Don't know what it's going to be like. We're, we're not even sure if they like the songs that we've got in the set. You know that yeah, kind of the, thing. Yeah, the hardest thing about doing a tour, and it depends no matter where it is, be it America, be it here, be it Australia, whatever it might be. The you get, you can get very um, 
not bored, but very uh, weary. Mm. If you're on like the tenth, twelfth show, yeah, to the point of, and that it's a very dangerous place to be because you it kind of comes across that you don't give a hoot, you know. Yeah. And <clears throat> the lesson I learned from that one a long time ago was go on every night on that stage like it's your opening night. Yeah. And then you're it'll always come back to you no matter how tired you are. Those people pay good money to see you, you know, and they worked hard for that money. And so you whinging about have been tired is not going to help yeah. anything. You know? So even though we are exhausted, <coughs> you know, go on and do it. You have to do it. As you say, those people haven't seen the other nine gigs. No, it's your tenth, but it's their yeah. first. They want to see the show. Absolutely. You yeah. Know? No, a good attitude. So listen, um, there next year, what do you do for Christmas? This year is a bit mad because normally it's very quiet for us. Um, we have only like Tina, myself, two kids, Tina's dad, pops. And it's all kind of eat the dinner and then there's about five, four people fast asleep with full bellies. Yeah. This year we have 14 coming around to us. So it's a big kind of, it's all family. So as, as Connell... You have here, to book the sofa early. We know sofa, I'm afraid. As Connell said to me earlier on, he says, uh, it'll, be, there'll be, it'll be carnage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's the way to describe that's, it. That, that's the best way to describe well, it. Well, good luck with that. Uh, so you're going to do a song for us now. I'm going to do... A, see, look, we're talking about Christmas, and this place is like Santa's grotto, by the way. Yeah. There's a laser lights going on <laughs> everywhere. Thank God I'm not epileptic. Um, <laughs> and I, well, we're going to do... Um, a good Christmas song from the Christmas album, because you've played the song from the Stories album, and because it's Christmas, and I want to wish everyone a happy Christmas that's listening, and you, and all the team. Um, this is a one we did on the Christmas album called It, it Came Upon a Midnight Clear. OK, you far away then. It came upon a midnight clear That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled and still the heavenly music flows for all the weary world. He saw Goodwill to men from heaven's all gracious king. And the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Beautiful. That is smashing. Absolutely. Tommy, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for having us, as always. Oh, no bother. It's like I, a yearly pilgrimage up here. It is, it? yeah. Mm. You know, uh, and, and people would ask, you know, because, you know, you, yourself, you're always up at Christmas, so they would ask, when's Tommy and when's Tommy in? And I'm serious, you know. That's brilliant to know. That's you, you're hardcore <laughs> o- Ulster Hall fans, you know. <laughs> Getting ready for the gig. Getting and, ready for the um, gig. Bring him in. You know, and is the Ulster Hall sold out? Not yet, no. It's a still tickets available. Um, it's doing great. I mean, I, I don't think it ever sells out until kind of closer to the time yeah. 
but um, hopefully it will now touch wood. Uh-huh. Um, nice Christmas present. Nice Christmas <laughs> present. Wink, wink. I'll buy two of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go on your own. <laughs> Don't go on your own. Okay. Bring the family. <laughs> right, Tommy, thanks for coming in. Connell, thank you, sir. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, no problem.